Hello and welcome to the Sunday Afternoon Modular. I hope everyone had a good start into the new year. I actually wanted to film a few things today, but then my tripod for the camera got broken, which is a bit annoying because it wasn't the cheapest. But I did not want to film it with my cell phone, I want to use my proper camera. So I decided, well, maybe it's just not the day today for filming. Anyhow, my studio is still full with things I had to move away due to the water damage I had last year. With the holidays in between, they are still deciding if they want to put in a new floor or not. It's all a bit annoying, because I want to move my stuff back where it belongs and have my beloved studio back. Alright, so what are we gonna do in this video? Well, I got a question on how you actually put a synth and a drum track together, so that you have a complete song. I did two videos some time ago. What do I need to build a modular synthesizer and what do I need to build my own drum machine? We are now going to have a look at the two videos and afterwards I show you what you need to combine our Eurorack synth with our Eurorack drum machine. Alright, let's go! Hello and welcome to the Sunday Afternoon Modular. In this video I will show you slick and quick what you need if you want to start with a modular synthesizer. I will not go into depth of the different modules. If you want to know more about filters, ADSR, VCAs, check out my Learn Modular Synths playlist. It will pop up at the end of this video. What I show you here is for a classic synthesizer. If you want to use a certain synth voice instead of a VCO or create your own drum computer, the setup will be different. I will show in a future video what you need for a little drum computer. But for now, let's focus on a classic synth. I will use Softube Modular in this video as it's easier for me to show you. First of all, you need a case. There are different cases in different sizes on the market. If you are unsure if modular synths really are a thing for you, you might want to start with a smaller one. But make sure that the case has enough space and enough power for all your modules. Now is the point where you need to decide whether you want to play your synth with a MIDI keyboard or if you want to use a sequencer. If you want to use a MIDI keyboard, you will need a MIDI to CV converter, where you can connect your MIDI keyboard to. Now the hardware module will have a MIDI connector of course. If you don't want to play the music yourself, you can get the sequencer. It easily lets you create musical sequences. A lot of sequencers have an internal clock. If the one you want does not have an internal clock, you need to get an external one. The clock basically controls the speed of your sequence. Next I have two VCOs on the list. I would get at least two because only one VCO is a bit boring. VCO stands for Voltage Controlled Oscillator and is the module that creates the whole sound. At this point you could consider a quantizer. A quantizer puts all notes into a certain scale. It's not a must-have and you easily can add it at a later point. Then I have a multiple module here. This is to multiply control voltages. As you see, I use a multiple here to split the note or pitch signal to feed it to each oscillator. For pitch signals I do recommend a buffered multiple. Next is an audio mixer. Because we have two VCOs, we have two audio signals, which we want to bring together. The ADSR or envelope module is needed to shape the tone. So whether it is a short or long tone, and you can also control the attack. ADSR stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release. 
Next is the VCA or voltage controlled amplifier. It varies the gain depending on the incoming control voltage. This is where the ADSR CV signal and the audio signal from the mixer come together. If the ADSR sends a CV signal to the VCA, it opens up and you can hear the tone. If the VCA does not receive a CV signal, it is closed and you cannot hear a tone. ADSR and VCA are important, because the VCO outputs a constant tone. Now, that would already be quite a good synth to start with. But to get a bit more variety, we add a VCF, a voltage controlled filter. There are low pass, high pass and band pass filters available. I would suggest to get the low pass filter, or one that offers all three options. If you want to know more about the filter types, there is a video I made. You can find it in my Learn Modular Synths playlist, which will pop up at the end of this video. Further, an LFO module is a cool thing to modulate your sound. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator and creates a rhythmic pulse, usually below 20 Hz, that can be used to modulate other modules. Again, it's not the must-have, but to have a little bit more fun with your modular synth, I would really recommend to get one. They are usually not that expensive. To spice things up, you could further add effect modules like a reverb, a delay or a distortion module. Again, totally optional for a basic synth, but definitely something to think about. That's almost it. What you also need is an output module. It brings the hot audio signal of a modular synth down to a line level signal that is suitable for external audio mixers and audio interfaces so you can record your sound. Often output modules also have a headphone output, so if you want to jam at night but don't disturb your neighbors, there you go. Now, some cases already have built-in line level outputs. In this case, you don't need an extra output module. There are also cases that offer a basic MIDI input. So in case you want to hook up your MIDI keyboard, you don't necessarily need a separate MIDI to CV module. But usually MIDI to CV modules offer a bit more options. And there are also cases that have built-in mixers and multiples. Last but not least, cables. Get yourself a good bunch of cables. The Eurorack system uses 3.5mm mono jack cables. Alright, that was it. Slick and quick, I hope it helps you with your first modular synth. If you want to know more about filters, ADSRs and VCAs and how to connect everything together, check out my Learn Modular Synths playlist. Hello and welcome to the Sunday Afternoon Modular. In this video I will show you slick and quick what you need if you want to build a little drum machine with Eurorack modules. I will use soft to Modular in this video as it's easier for me to show you. First of all you need a case. There are different cases in different sizes on the market. If you only want to create a drum machine, a smaller case should do the job. Make sure it has enough space and power for all the modules you want to use. Alright, so now that we have the case, we need something to create a drum beat. For this we need a gate or trigger sequencer. Unlike the sequencer we used to build a basic synthesizer, this sequencer does only output gate or trigger signals to trigger our drum modules, so it will not output any pitch information. There are different step sequencers available. The most common ones offer 8 or 16 steps. But there are also external sequencers, like the Arturia BeatStep Pro, which lets you create sequences with up to 64 steps. Each step or trigger signal is like a hit on the drum. If your sequencer does not have an internal clock, you will need an additional clock module. 
It sets the speed or BPM for your sequence. Another cool thing is the swing function. It will add tiny delays to your drum beat and lets it swing, so it's not just a straight four on the floor beat. All right, what we need now are modules that create the tone. The most basic three I would suggest to get are a kick drum module, a snare drum module and a hi-hat module. Of course, you can expand your modular drum machine according your wishes. There are cymbal modules, tom modules, rimshot, clap and other percussion modules available. Instead of those modules or for additional sounds, you can also use sample modules. The Erika Synth Pico Drum, for instance, is a module loaded with different drum and other samples that you can trigger. You can also load your own samples onto it. Another module is the TipTop Audio One. It comes with a slot for a micro SD card where you can load your samples to. Such a sound sample does not necessarily need to be a drum. It could also be a short bass line or a sound effect or whatever samples you load onto it. All right, back to our drum machine. Now that we have our drum voices, we use a mixer to bring them together. This also lets us set the volume level for each drum voice. From the mixer, we can go to the output module. And that's our basic drum machine. Now, of course, we can add different modules to shape the sound or add effects, just like equalizers, a compressor to smash the drum beat, or even a transient shaper, like the ALM Busy Circuits MFX offers one. We can add a distortion module, delay, reverb, and so on. That's the cool thing about a modular synth or drum machine, that we can just customize it to our needs. I once built a modular drum machine, but did not want to mix all the drum voices together. I wanted to record the drum for a track, but not onto a single stereo track. So I used three output modules and connected them to different inputs of my audio interface. So I could record the kick to track one, the snare to track two and the hi-hat to track three. So I could further edit them individually in my DAW. You see, there are a lot of possibilities, but for a basic drum machine to start with, a trigger sequencer, kick, snare and hi-hat module, a mixer and an output module will do perfectly fine. For those wondering why an output module, it is needed to bring the hot signal of a modular synth down to a line level signal that is suitable for your external mixer or your audio interface. All right, so we have both creations here. For the synth, we forget the MIDI to CV. If you want to use a MIDI keyboard, you just play along. We use the sequencer here. And for the drum machine, we have our beat sequencer. So what we need first, that everything plays in the same tempo and fits together, is a clock module. We either have one with multiple outputs, like the ALM Pamela, so we can send clock signal 1 to our synth and clock signal 2 to our drum machine. Or we have a module that only has one clock output. In this case, we can just patch it to a multiple module. Now we can have them run both at the same tempo. I like clock modules that have a display that show you the actual BPM. For the ALM Pamela, which is a bit more advanced, you can even have different clock signals for each output. Alright, so now we need to bring everything together. Either we already have a mixer that has some free channels, but here as you see the 4 channel mixer module from our drum machine is full. I have the Cosmix Pro, so we use it here in this demonstration. For the drum machine, we either patch the mixer to a channel of the Cosmix Pro, but because we have enough channels here, we can patch each of the drums to their own channel and even pan them. This means that we can set the tone to more left or more right in the stereo picture. 
and then we patch our synthesizer to channel 5 of the mixer, which actually is a stereo channel on the Cosmix Pro, so if you like, you can use a stereo oscillator. In our example here, everything is mono. Alright, now that everything is patched to the mixer, we can mix it together, pan it, set the volume how we like, and from there we can go to an output module that sets everything to line level and connect it to an audio interface if we like to record our sound. A mixer like the Cosmix Pro also has send returns, so we can integrate effect modules. There is a mono send return and a stereo send return. If you want to know a bit more about the Cosmix Pro, check out the video I made about the Noise Engineering Sur Mixer and why I don't like digitally controlled modules. Alright, that's it. So what we basically need is a clock module at the beginning and a mixer module at the end to bring everything together. We still have a free channel on the Cosmix Pro, so we could add another synth. I often use channels 1 to 4 for drums, one channel for a bass synth and another one for a lead synth that plays the melody. I hope I could help you with this video. If there are any questions, drop them below in the comments. If you like my videos and want to support my small channel, you will make me more than happy if you leave a like and become a subscriber. So long, have a great day, evening or night, and see you next time on the...